this is Rick Asselge from ExercisesForInjuries.com. I'm, I'm here on holidays in Victoria, British Columbia, and I just stepped out in order to do this quick video for you. And it's kind of a continuation of the video that I ended up doing, another video that I ended up doing, where I kind of talked about a couple tweaks that you can end up doing for a common hip flexor stretch in order to change the stretch, in order to target different areas, and in order to make it more effective. Now, when it comes to that stretch that I end up talking about, a common thing that I end up hearing from clients is that they're not able to do the stretch because they can't kneel down. So kneeling ends up bothering them. They end up having osteoarthritis in their knee joint. It could be specific joint within the knee, um, or they uh, they end up having patellofemoral pain syndrome, uh, hence they can't end up kneeling on their kneecap. So this is a variation that they can end up doing in order to get an, an effective hip flexor stretch, but not kneel down. Also, it's, an, it's a great example of a hip flexor stretch that you could end up doing at work easily at the end, uh, easily at work especially if your work involves uh, a lot of sitting. So to, what I want to end up finding is a chair and the edge of the chair. So here I'm using uh, just a park bench. And what I would end up doing is sitting on the edge of the park bench or the, or the chair. So I've got half of my body. So I've got my left side of my body, my left legs out front. And now I'm going to bring that right knee back. And so I'm almost in that 90 to 90 position, but I'm not kneeling down. I, I'm going to tighten up my abdominal area, and then that will maintain the curve of my back and lock the pelvis. And then what I can end up doing is bringing, my hip, bringing myself forward to intensify that stretch. If I don't feel anything, I can relax, bring that knee further back, tighten up the abdominal area, and then contract my glute and kind of bring my body forward and then with me and I'm keeping that my upper body nice and upright I'm keeping that foot knee and hip in good alignment I'm keeping this knee hip and foot in good alignment I've got that glute contracted that hamstring contracted and I'm moving and I'm moving forward and I'm looking at getting a stretch really through that rectus femoris uh, muscle I can ease it up take it Rest it up, get back into it again, tighten up that abdominal area, tighten up the glute and that hamstring, and looking at stretching through that rectus femoris muscle. And then as I go through a couple repetitions, I can progressively end up going back further. Bracing, contracting the glutes, intensifying the stretch. So what I would end up recommending is, you know, starting off with two repetitions held for about 20 seconds, and then you can progress from there. I can end up doing three or four repetitions holding for 30 seconds. So there you go. This is Rick Casales from ExercisesForInjuries.com. Make sure to swing by ExercisesForInjuries.com. Enter in your injury or condition or pain in the search box. There's a good chance that I end up having an article or a video on your condition or injury or pain. Also, um, you know, so if you're watching this on YouTube, head up above and hit subscribe. And what that'll do is you'll end up getting videos like this uh, where I end up talking about injuries and pain. And thirdly, head down below and hit like and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this video the information I'm providing, and if you have any questions. So this is Rick Casales from ExercisesForInjuries.com. If, in, if you're looking for a program to help with your tight hip flexors, um, I, have, I created a program that targets that and helps overcome tight hip flexors. You can see it down below, and you can click the link in order to get more information. But this is Rick Casales um, coming to you for my holidays, saying take care and bye-bye.